Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about my top five tips for you if you want to get started with embedded systems or if you want to try whether embedded systems is something you might be interested in. But before we do that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a computer science professor and I've been working with embedded systems most of my professional career. And my mission is to help you to master the next step in your software engineering career. And that's why I'm making these videos. But now let's get back to my top five tips on how to get started with embedded systems, starting with tip number one. And this would be learn the programming language C and learn it on your desktop environment, on your PC, on your Mac. Why is that? Well, first of all, it doesn't require an additional investment. You already have your machine. All the software you need is basically for free. You can find free tutorials, free YouTube videos on how to learn C online. So you don't have to invest any money to get started with that. C is the language that you need if you want to really work with embedded systems. And it's also the language I would recommend to use on an embedded system or at least start out on an embedded systems. And that's why it's important to learn that language to get familiar with concepts like pointers, memory management in C and things like that. And then once you have established that, you can take the next step and that would be my tip number two, get started with an actual hardware. And there I would recommend either using an Arduino board or something like an STM32 Nucleo board. I will put links in the description below for both of them. They're fairly easy to get and they are also reasonably priced around 30, 35, dollars or euros and they are very good starter devices for a couple of reasons. For one, you find also a lot of information, a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos online available to get started. Also the peripherals, the hardware accessories and so on are easy to get. So it's easy to build systems with them. And there's also a plethora of project ideas out there in the internet that you can just find and do. So there's a lot of information, parts, stuff available for you if you start with those two platforms. So once you have done that, and the next step would be to better understand what's actually going on in this microcontroller. And to do that, the best way is to look at how the assembler language actually works. There, I would recommend to look into the MIPS assembler language. Um, there's also a lot of information available on the MIPS assembler language online. And there are also emulators available online. So you don't have to use hardware. You can also emulate this on your desktop PC, on your Mac, or even in a browser. And learning all that will give you a better understanding of how an actual microcontroller works. Then the fourth tip would be to learn more about how the peripherals, how the interfaces of a microcontroller work. What's an I square C? How does an SPI work? What's a UART? What are the different interfaces that you have? How does an analog to digital converter work? Understanding that, reading about that, you can just look at what different interfaces does my microcontroller offer and then Google the terms that you find there in the data sheet to learn more about them. Also there, there are videos available explaining the different interfaces and you can also read a lot online and you get a better understanding of how the interfaces are working and what they are actually doing. And here is also maybe then the step where an STM32 might be better suited than an Arduino because the Arduino is already encapsulating a lot of things in libraries. So you don't get direct access, which is convenient because you 
can just use things with libraries rather than having to do a lot of things to get it working. But um, if you really want to understand what's going on, that's easier if you don't have all these convenience features. And that's where an STM32 board might be even give you more bare bones access than an Arduino. But you can also get the same bare bone feeling with an Arduino if you are not using the library. So that's always a possibility. And then the fifth thing would be learn how to debug an embedded software. Because by now you have already written a little bit of software. Your projects might be getting more and more complex. And of course, if the project is getting more complex, also the failure scenarios get more complex. So you need these debugging skills. You need to learn how to debug without breakpoints, for instance, if you have certain uh, timing requirements that you have to meet. You have to learn things like, okay, how can I use, for instance, flashing an LED to indicate where I'm in the code or toggling pins? How can I use an oscilloscope to measure signals to really see what's read by the microcontroller um, on the analog side? Um, something like a logic analyzer to trace what's sent out through an SPI to really understand and see what's going on. So those are then the things that take you to the next level and also take you then to a level where you can start really building bigger projects. Now I'm curious, what are you doing to get better as an embedded software engineer or to get started as an embedded software engineer? What would be your recommendations to get started? How did you get started? Leave it down in the comments below. And of course, if you found this video helpful, if you have liked it, please smash the like button. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, if you want to take your software engineering career to the next level, then please subscribe to my channel so that I can see you in the next video.